This is the QTV Nightly News coming to you from our studios on Karaba Avenue and I am Jul Denjai. Thank you for joining us. Here are the main news headlines. The Gambia has consulted with the ECOWAS on the plan to establish a court to judge crimes committed during the regime of former President Yahya Jame. And Work for Health the Gambia celebrated its 50 year anniversary on Saturday. The International Organization for Migration, in collaboration with the Ministries of Foreign Affairs and Trade, launched a project to promote intra-regional labor migration for local development in West Africa. And February 4th is set aside as World Cancer Day to raise awareness of the effects of cancer, encourage its prevention, detection and treatment. In sports news, Soma Opa and Senior Secondary School conducted its annual inter-house athletics competition and used the occasion to emphasize the health benefits of sports. Those were your headlines and now the news in detail. Thank you very much for staying with us. If you are just tuning in, this is QTV News with me, Joel Denjai. And now let's look at our stories. The Gambia's Justice Minister, Dauda E. Jalo, met with the ECOWAS Commission President, Dr. Omar Ali Uturi, at the ECOWAS Commission headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria, to seek ECOWAS cooperation in the plan to establish a court to judge crimes committed during the regime of former President Yahya Jame between 1994 and 2017. Ali Usise reports. Minister Dauda Jalos visit to the seat of the ECOWAS Commission Presidency in Abuja is part of implementing judicial reforms in the Gambia. Leading a delegation of experts from the Gambia's judiciary, Minister Jalo held a fruitful discussion with the Gambia-born ECOWAS Commission President, Dr. Omar Ali Touré, in the presence of Justice Edward Amwaka Santi, President of the ECOWAS Court of Justice, and Dr. Abdel Fattah Moussa, Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security of ECOWAS. Minister Jalla briefed the Commission on the country's intention to establish a court to judge crimes committed during the regime of former President Yaya Jami between 1994 and 2017. Minister Jalla, through this visit, formalizes the Gambia's request for ECOWAS support to implement the judicial reform component resulting from the recommendations of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission TRRC of the Gambia. Responding to Minister Jalla, the President of the ECOWAS Commission, Dr. Omar Ali Touré, reaffirmed that ECOWAS is ready to accompany the Gambia and any other member state in actions and programs for the benefit of the population and the consolidation of democracy. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sise. And Work for Health to Gambia celebrated its 50-year anniversary on Saturday. The theme for this year's celebration is inspiring national commitment towards active lifestyle and resilience against climate change impact. Our sports reporter Momodo Gajaga joined them and he now reports. Work for Health, as the name implies, features people working to be healthy. On Saturday, as part of their fifth anniversary commemoration, members worked eight kilometers from the Serekunda West Mini Stadium to Pipeline and Canifing via GRTS Road through Jimpex before ending the journey back at the Serekunda West Mini Stadium, all the while accompanied by music and dancing. <laughs> Sirif Gomez, founder, Work for Health The Gambia, details how they've grown in number. Uh, it's five years, that's the sign, that's the symbol. We've been talking it, we've been toggling it. The initiative came about when we thought about that it's time what we have as a lifestyle, active lifestyle, active exercises. Let's spread this to the communities. I spread this uh, initiative, this concept with my friend, Brother Diba. You know, yeah, when you have an action man right, in Brahma right. Diva, okay, let's do it. Immediately, we told to Muhammad Jagana, he said, let's create our WhatsApp page. And that's how we started. 2nd February 2019, until today, come every on, Saturday, on. every week, come every on. month, every year, we're out 
trying to encourage the community to lead an active life. The, the inspiration is from the fact that when we are exercising alone, there are so many people who keep saying, oh, I wish I could go with you. I wish I could come. Modern day living for many people is compounded by eating all types of food and usually due to walking patterns, doing little or no exercise, which poses a health challenge. Walking is one of the best ways to exercise. Dr. Abubakar Jha is the Chief Medical Director at Sarab Medical Center. Well, exercise in general is uh, very good for health and uh, walking is one of the best exercise that anybody can do. People think that when you say exercise, uh, you're talking about running or going to the gym or other things, but walking can be the healthiest thing uh, that you can do. Um, uh, it can uh, reduce your chances of having heart attack, it can reduce your chances of having stroke, it can um, uh, prolong uh, your healthy life. So. Um, exercise in general is really very good for the health. It's one of the best things that one can do for health. Some members of Work for Health Senegal joined their Gambian counterparts as part of the celebration. Health experts say walking is a great way to improve or maintain your overall health and that just 30 minutes walking every day can increase cardiovascular fitness, strengthen bones, reduce excess body fat and boost muscle power and endurance. Judging by the growing numbers taking up walking, it appears the message is hitting home. Mamudu Gajaga, KTV News. And the International Organization for Migration, in collaboration with the Ministries of Foreign Affairs and Trade, launched a project on Friday to promoting intra-regional labor migration for local development in West African countries under the Migration for Development program. This support by myself is voiced by Momodo Lamin Choi. To address challenges of youth unemployment and irregular migration, the IOM plans to assist in strengthening socio-economic development and intra-regional mobility in the rural areas of the Gambia, Senegal, Guinea-Conakry, and Guinea-Bissau, based on youth-focused programs. The aim is to promote safe, orderly, and regular mobility, both within and across borders, while ensuring a balance between labor supply and demand to support youth employment and income generation. Usman George Baji is the national program officer with the Migration Management Unit at IOM The Gambia. The overarching aim of the project is, one, the governments adopt evidence-based policies and strategies in labor migration and governance. Two, youth across countries find job opportunities in identified strategic economic sectors, especially those in the rural and border areas. This project is built on the success of the two previous initiatives implemented by IOM between 2018 and 2021, namely bringing together youth, the diaspora and local authorities for an integrated approach to promoting employment and combating irregular migration in the Gambia, Guinea and Guinea-Bissau, and supporting local economic development in the Gambia, Guinea and Guinea-Bissau. Nume Saho, Director of Diaspora and Migration at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, says this is a significant milestone, not only the Gambia, but for the entire region in pursuit of safe, orderly and regular migration. By doing so, we can harness the potential of our human capital, utilizing their skills and expertise for the benefit of our nation, while also contributing to the development of the country they migrate to. We recognize that successful labor migration system cannot be achieved in isolation. It requires strong partnerships and cooperation among countries in the region, as well as with international organizations and stakeholders. The current project aims to consolidate gains from these previous interventions and take on board the recommendations made following the project's final evaluation. Faba Jame, Director of Employment at the Ministry of Trade, expressed optimism for the successful implementation of the project. The ministry has taken some steps in the labor migration in the form of bilateral engagement through bilateral agreement on manpower exchange between the Gambia and other countries. We are happy to say that we have gone far, but we also have concluded with one or two countries, which include Qatar. 
And then Spain is also one country that we are engaged in the bilateral discussions. Right now, we are reviewing an agreement that they have submitted to the ministry. And then we hope very soon we'll conclude on this. The Gambia government has taken significant steps towards promoting safe and orderly migration, including the ratification of international conventions and the adoption of relevant policies, such as the national migration policy and the labor migration strategy. Despite all these efforts, Gambia, like many other West African countries, is grappling with the challenges of high levels of irregular migration. Mohamed Lamin, TV News. And February 4th of each year is set aside as World Cancer Day to raise awareness of the effects of cancer, encourage its prevention and detection and treatment, and promote health equity. As QTV's Jennifer Sonko reports, the theme for this year is Close the Care Gap. World Cancer Day centers on examining the socioeconomic factors that lead to disparities in cancer prevention, incidence, and survival, such as cultural and gender norms, income and education levels, and biases based on age, gender, ethnicity, disability, and lifestyle. The day for increased action to improve cancer awareness, prevent cancer, support advancements in diagnosis and treatment, and address the shortcomings in health systems. Cancer is one of the leading causes of mortality worldwide, with approximately 19 million new cases and close to 10 million cancer-related deaths every year. More than 60% of the world's total new annual cases occur in low- and middle-income countries, which account for about 70% of the world's cancer deaths. The rising incidence of cancer is further straining the already scarce resources in many developing countries, including here in the Gambia, which is the third highest prevalence of liver cancer globally, with men disproportionately affected. Liver cancer in men counts for more cases than all other forms of cancer combined in the Gambia, says Dr. Ramusar, a Gambian hepatologist. Research indicates that every year, 286 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer, and 199 die from the disease. Cervical cancer ranks as the most frequent cancer among women in the Gambia and most frequent cancer among females between 15 and 44 years of age. Cancers exact a heavy toll on economies through reduced productivity, employment, labor losses and capital investment reductions. Accordingly, investment in cancer screening, diagnosis and treatment could yield substantial health and economic benefits, especially in less developed countries, which have lower levels of cancer survival compared with high-income countries. An organization such as C3G, Cancer Confrontation Care Gambia, are complementing government efforts by organizing screenings, donating equipment and and raising awareness. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jenna Basonko. And that report there by Jenna Basonko takes us to a short commercial break. When we return, we have some more local as well as international news stories for you. Do stay tuned. The future is now. With QCell's 5G network, experience speeds like never before. With our new 5G Rocket Fix internet plan, get speeds from 10 Mbps to 100 Mbps. With your 5G enabled devices. Walk into QCell headquarters to get one of our 5G routers and experience the true feeling of 5G only with QCell. QCell brings you the future. Tech innovation, incredible speed. The future is now. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QSL, soon your bus. We innovate, others follow. Terms and conditions apply. You asked for it and QCell is giving it to you with our new and improved Sunyu Bundle Mega Promo. Now you can get more data at cheaper prices. Buy any of our bundle packages and enjoy massive discounts. Dial Star 303 has and enjoy browsing on the network with the biggest coverage. Buy a 20 megabytes data bundle for as low as 7 dollars and 50 bottles today or purchase bigger bundles up to 20 gigabytes yes that's right 20 gigabytes of data at your fingertips with our mega promo bundles you can browse more chat longer and stay connected on the go anytime anywhere 
For more information, call our customer care on 111 QSL. We innovate. Orders follow. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. If you are just tuning in, this is QTV News with me, Jul Denjai. And now let's look at the rest of our stories. Climate activists in the Gambia on Saturday called for more support, involvement and training of youth to complement national climate advocacy drive. They were speaking at the opening of a training for UNICEF climate ambassadors organized by Climate Earth, the Gambia. And Sumana Esonyasi attended, and this is his report. This training, organized by Clean Art Gambia, in partnership with UNICEF, is aimed at introducing 25 children and youth climate advocates from across the country to practical activities that will broaden their knowledge and provide them with the requisite training for effective climate advocacy. Abdullah Singate, Executive Coordinator, Clean Art Gambia, highlights how such trainings are important to shaping conversations on climate advocacy, especially among young people. And while commending UNICEF for partnering with them, he calls for more support for young climate advocates in the Gambia, which he says will greatly impact their collective drive to lessening the number and scale of emergencies with children being the most affected around the world. Clean Art Gambia and UNICEF will be working with all of you within the next six months as ambassadors for our environment. But even beyond that, uh, beyond the, at the end of the project, we, we pledge for you to continue to be ambassadors. Uh, after this training, we'll have a Teach Me Climate initiative, which will go down to the grassroots. It was going to focus more in the communities to have children, both in the formal and the informal sector, that will be trained on climate change. On behalf of the UNICEF country representative, Christian Muganga, says interventions like this one will equip children and youth with the requisite knowledge, skills and resources to act on climate change and inspire others to do the same. Adding that the Gambia's current ranking of 37 in the UNICEF's Global Children Climate Risk Index underscores the significant risk of deepening child deprivations as a result of the impact of climate change and went on to call for urgent action to tackle the climate crisis. I wish to express UNICEF's profound appreciation to the government of the Gambia for its commitment to engage children and the youth in the climate action movement. Climate change is a child rights crisis, which is having an impact on the future of children and the entire Gambia population. Also stressing the need for more support for young climate advocates, Fatou Marong of the Gambia Environment Alliance and Bouakar Zedi Jalo, Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Environment, highlight the country's achievement in the fight against climate change. However, they called on stakeholders in the climate advocacy drive to collaborate more, especially in organizing such training for young people. If I'm very right, you guys will be doing a lot and you guys would gain a lot of training from this. So I want to tell you that you have to hold this as much as possible, um, be very serious with what you're doing because you gain exposure, you gain knowledge, you gain a lot of things that could uh, impact your life in the future. Um, so that shows the important review. Climate change is something that um, is here to stay with us as far as um, science has, has said. And it's very important, therefore, to make sure that youths are capacitized to be able to manage this thing going forward. Because the old people are going to go away and leave us managing this problem. So we need to learn how, what it is, what does it do, how do we manage it, and what are the approaches that have worked in other countries with regards to uh, moving forward. The Gambia, like most developing countries, is vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, which, among other things, affects the country's key economic sectors, such as the agriculture sector, which is dominated by extensive rain-fed agriculture as well as tourism. It is also believed that its impact affects the physical development of young people, including poor development of lungs, brain and future fertility, as well as their mental health. Hence, the importance of this training to raise more awareness on effective climate advocacy. I'm Smiley Soinyasi for QTV News. Soma Opa and Senior Secondary School conducted its annual Interhouse Athletics Competition on Saturday at their school football field. Our regional correspondent Bakari Balde witnessed the event and he felt in this report. School athletics play a major role in strengthening community and school spirit. 
and give students a sense of belonging and promote unity. This year's athletics competition was a colorful one. Our students were grouped into four houses, namely Limoko, the car destination Soma, Era Council and Bajamba Construction to compete in track and field events. In the track events, Adrahman Sane from Era Council won the 5,000 meters boys and Kadi Sediba from Bajamba won the 3,000 meters girls. Abdullah Jalo from Era Council won the boys 200 meters, 400 meters and 800 meters. While Adamak S. Kamara also won 200 meters, 400 meters and 800 meters girls. <laughs> Bajamba House dominated in the 1x400m, 4x400m and medley relay. Here are reactions from the athletes. My plan is to run to be, to be like Dinabas. You know, she normally go and represent the country. I want to do this. I'm ready to represent it. The national level. I want to be my career. I just please for me to be a career. The reason why I like sport too much, especially this in the, in the house, is just, um, it's just that I want to join, I want to join army. It's because of army. That's why I'm fighting all of this. Yeah. I, I am ready to represent my school. If, not even at Farafeni only, even at Bagao. Yeah, that's, that's my intention. Usman Jaju, the school principal, and Lami S. Baro from the school sports department outlined the significance of such activity in the school calendar. In any area you are better off, if you take it seriously, it can earn you something in the future. Like today, I've, it was very amazing seeing certain students participating, whom you know that they are not so much good in class, but they are very good in track events, field events. So that makes us to be very proud of them. And from here, I promise them that I'll do my best at least to make sure that that area is well improved in order to keep them in school. Now when you look at the Gambia, you know, we want to have these you know, young athletes. We want to catch them young. You know, when we have them at the school level, there they can be you know, you know, nurtured and they, are, they will be grown to become national athletes you know, the likes of Ginabas and others. At the end of the competition, Bajamba House came first with 412 points, Limboka second with 356 points, Era Council third with 312 points, and Dakar Destination Soma fourth with 303 points. The selected athletes will represent the school at the inter-school athletics competition to be held this month in Farafenye. Bakari Balde, QTV News. Well, I'm afraid that's all we got time for. But before we end this bulletin, here is a recap of our main news stories. The Gambia has consulted with ECOWAS on the plan to establish a court to judge crimes committed during the regime of former President Yahya Jame. Work for Health, the Gambia celebrated its 50-year anniversary on Saturday. Now, the International Organization for Migration, in collaboration with the Ministries of Foreign Affairs and Truth, launched a project to promote intra-regional labor migration for local development in West Africa. February 4 is set aside as World Cancer Day to raise awareness of the effects of cancer, encourage its prevention, detection and treatment. In sports news, Soma Opa and Senior Secondary School conducted its annual inter-house athletics competition and used the equation to raise awareness of the health benefits of sports. That's all we have for you in this edition of the Bulletin. Do join us at 8 p.m. tomorrow for the Weekend Review with Ade Drame and Momodou Lamin Choi. Thanks for watching.